Florida. Today we're going to be tying Mark Jacoba's doofus. First thing we're going to do is take our thread, start it right behind the eye of the hook. We're going to take our extra large bead chain eyes and we're going to secure it down with a couple parachute wraps and X wraps, making sure that they are extremely tight. You want to tie them pretty close to the eye of the hook. Once we got those secured, we're going to take our thread and work our way back to right behind the point of the hook. Then we're going to come in here with our staz. We're going to tie that down right there. All you need really is three or four really tight wraps. Then we're going to move our thread just a little bit back. And we're going to palmer this as staz, trying not to trap any of the fibers underneath. Once you got that done, we're going to do one or two back wraps just to line up our thread with the estaz and then capture that. I like to do two captures and then I like to do three little ties in front to really secure that down and we could trim that out of there. Next step is we're going to come in here with our craft fur. This is going to be chartreuse craft fur. We're going to be tying two clumps of this craft fur on top of each other. So the first clump is going to be a little bit less dense than the second one. So once we cut our craft fur off the hide, we're going to come in here, pinch about third the way up and just take all this under fur out of it. Just reducing the bulk of the tie. We're going to come in here, make a candle wick shape. Just kind of stack those fibers on top, pulling the long ones out, just making it look a little prettier. All right, after that, we can move our thread right in the middle, in between the estaz and the eyes. We're going to measure our craft for to our desired length. I really like two and a little bit lengths the shank of the hook. I'm going to come in there, I'm going to pinch right where I want to cut it. I'm going to cut that, place that right on top of the hook, and I'm just going to pinch wrap and tie that down right on the top of the hook, holding tension on the craft for when I tie so it sits on the top of the hook. And we're going to tie that all the way back till we hit the estaz. Then we're going to come in here with our second color, which is orangutan rust. We're going to repeat that same exact process, but this time with just a little bit more. I'm going to cut that off the hide. Set that aside. And we're going to start pulling out the underfur. Once we get the nice shape we want, with the craft fur. We're going to measure again. And when we measure this one, we want it to line up identically with the other batch of craft fur that we tied on top. So once we got that, we're going to pinch right where we want it, take our scissors, cut that nice and flush, place that right on the top of the hook, doing a nice pinch wrap. And we're going to tie that in nice and tight right on that previous wrap. We're going to tie to the same position right behind the estaz and then we can work our thread right back to the middle of that in between the bead chain and the estaz. Next thing we're going to do is take our dry fly rooster neck. We're going to pull two hackles out. We're going to straighten all the barbs down and we're just going to start plucking off the barbs. What this is going to do is give us an antenna to use for this fly. And once you finish stripping them off all on both sides, it's going to leave you with two of these nice little antennas that we're going to tie in. So once you got that, I'm going to take one of them, angle it down, kind of going parallel with the bend of the hook, and we're going to do one loose wrap. 
Actually, we're going to do two or three loose wraps. And we're just going to kind of get a bend going a little upward like that. Once you got that, you could put three or four wraps just to make sure it holds. We're going to repeat the same process on the other side, matching it identically. Doing four or five wraps to really secure them. And then once you got them in right position, then we're going to really crank on them and then trim the last little bit before you get to the eyes out. And we're going to take our thread and we're going to move it just right in front of the craft fur and the eyes. Then we can come in here with our brush. Trim that little wire a little bit. We're going to tie that in right there. It's going to be right behind the craft fur leaving just a little room you don't want it butted up against it and then we're gonna fall right behind the eyes in that little trough that we created then we're just gonna take this craft fur br or EP brush and we're just gonna start palmering back trying to capture as little fiber underneath as we wrap over itself holding tension the whole time as you move forward and once we got that to the eyes I'm gonna do one more wrap once we got that done I'm gonna try to separate best I can of this EP brush and I'm gonna capture that doing two nice tight wraps on that and then two nice tight wraps in front of it and then I'm actually going to come in here and whip finish right now before I even trim that. Just two sets of three should be more than enough. Once we do that, we could just trim our thread off. And you can actually parachute this off without even having to cut it. Sometimes. Sometimes it's easier than others. Today it wants to be stubborn. Hmm. And once we got that off, I'm going to come in here with our botkin. And we're just going to pick out any trapped fibers that we got. I actually like this little comb. It really gets in there. You could just pull out anything you want. And the fly is more or less done. We just have to trim it. And add a couple barrings to it. So the first thing we're going to do is trim these antennas just a little bit. I like them actually a little bit shorter than the craft fur. So we're just going to measure those up together. And we're just going to cut those just a little shorter than the craft fur. This just gives them a little bit more stoutness to them. They kind of spring back easier. I'm going to take our scissor and just cut flush on an angle just so we could see that little hot spot of a staz in there pretty well and we're going to flip the fly over just kind of trim around it making sure to get any crazy strays kind of want like a nice little profile so it tracks a little straighter And then that's going to be that. Once we got that done, I'm going to take our fly, put it in the vise like that, or any way you can actually. We're going to come in here with a brown sharpie, and we're going to do three bars. One pretty close, 
one more or less in the middle, and then one at the tip. And that's going to be the done fly. Like I said, this is a Mark Giacoba's original pattern. He made this fly for the Everglades for giant snook and redfish in the backcountry. And it's just a great all around pattern. Those whiskers really, really make fish go absolutely nuts. It lands super soft. It's just a great all around pattern for the Everglades. Thank you guys for watching this video, and we'll see you next time.